Hey guys, what is up today? We're going to be doing an unboxing of the Hollow Sun 509. It's actually the HE 509, so it's got that ACS uh, Vulcan reticle from Primary Arms. Um, so let's go ahead and get into the video. So a little disclaimer here. Um, I'm not an expert of any kind. Uh, I am a guy who loves firearms and firearm accessories. The following video is not a review. The video serves as an unboxing and overview of features mixed in with some of my own opinions. Um, everything you see in this video was purchased by me with my own money. None of it was sent to me for review, and I assure you that this video is 100% honest and unbiased as possible. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into things. Um, now, before we actually get into the unboxing itself, it's important to know that the HE 509 is a slightly different size than your standard 509 or even the 509T. Um, so before purchasing the optic, make sure that you do your own research and make sure that the AG 509 will fit your specific cut, uh, whatever your slide is milled for. Now, um, you can get two different options when it comes to the HE 509. You can get one that comes with an RMR plate, which is this, this one did. And you can also get the Glock MOS plate. Um, so there's that. Personally, I mounted this optic on my current carry gun, which is a Smith & Wesson MMP9 2.0, and I chose to use a C&H plate. Um, this specific model came with the RMR plate, like I said before. So there is the 509 ACSS Vulcan reticle on my current carry gun. So there's that. Um, so yeah, so there's we went through all that stuff. Um, Holosun provides packaging that protects your product during shipping. Um, I'm a big fan of their packaging. The exterior of the packaging does a great job going into details about the optic. As you can see here, it shows you the reticle measurements. Um, well, somewhere it does. Uh, okay, I don't know. I thought it did. But uh, there's the reticles and... Or not the reticles, but the reticle and like how it lays out in your window. Um, and then down here is your bullet drop compensation, which is pretty cool. As you can see, it shows 9, 40, and 45 along with some rifle. Uh, so you could actually use this on like an offset mount and it would be pretty effective. Um, inside the box, you're going to receive some screws. We're going to open the box here. You're going to receive some screws, a plate, an adjustment tool for windage and elevation, um, and removal of the battery tray, along with some documentation that no one will really read. But if you want to set this optic up exactly how you want it, um, you're going to have to read that documentation, okay? Um, so the optic's not in here because we already have it mounted. But there's the screws we talked about, the plate, and the adjustment tool, which is really cool of Hollison to include. Big fan of that. And shout out to Hollison for giving us like a reusable box. It's actually like a, a pretty decent box that you can use other stuff for. It's got that dense foam on the inside along with the foam on top. And honestly, and you get your optic cloth as well. Um, honestly, it just big props to Hollison. Great, great um, packaging in my opinion. So there's that. Some of you don't care about packaging, but personally, I do. Um, let's see here. Yep. So I own this optic I put on my carry gun. I also own the 507C. Uh, both of these optics shipped with a battery already installed. If you do some research online, people speculate that when a battery is already installed, um, it most likely is refurbished or returned. I actually emailed Hollison um, about this. And whoever I spoke to denied that accusation and said that um, they're probably just being left in after testing. Which I would have liked a more definitive answer. But at the same time, I understand that sometimes your customer service people are not like that hands-on with the product. So it's hard to tell what's going on there. But anyways, um, now there are several major features of this optic that I believe make it one of the most viable options at the higher end of the market. This is an expensive optic. Um, right now on Midway USA, it's about $450. So as far as the higher end goes, this is, in my opinion, pretty much the most viable option out there. Um, first off, you have a side-loading battery tray. This means you do not need to remove the optic in order to swap your batteries. So as you can see on the right side of the gun, 
you get your tray you unscrew that i have all my screws marked so i can see if they get walked out but you get a battery tray just make sure you get that in there snug so you don't have any water go in um so yeah you don't need to remove the optic in order to swap your batteries this is awesome so no more going to the range after every battery swap uh, the 509 has an enclosed emitter which in theory makes it more resilient to water and debris kind of a no-brainer there um with an open emitter optic such as the 507c if dust or water gets onto the emitter you most likely will have a distorted reticle um also because the 509 is a um a enclosed emitter there cannot be any screws going down through the optic like you would see on an open emitter optic this optic actually screws onto a rail from the side, similar to how a rifle red dot attaches. Um, so you can see here's actually the one screw that it requires to mount onto the rail. Um, so there is that. And no, it's not a Picatinny rail. It is different. Um, I know there, there are some people out there I've seen in forums questioning about that. It is not a Picatinny rail. Um, so yeah. The 509 also comes with the solar panel, which for me personally is not a huge deal, but I am a huge fan of redundancy and I like knowing I have a backup method of operation. The solar panel also allows for an auto adjustment option. This means that the optic can see how dark the environment is around itself and adjust the brightness of the reticle to better shoot the lighting environment. Um, personally, I do not use this feature because if you're in a dark area shooting into a light area, the reticle will not be at a very good brightness setting. Again, it's a cool feature that I'm sure some people love. Um, but for me personally, I don't use it. The 509 also has a lockout feature. This means that you can pre prevent the buttons from doing any type of adjustment. So what I mean by this is uh, you can lock the optic out. And the if it accidentally, you know, if you're accidentally hitting the buttons it won't get brighter or dimmer which i think is important for carrying or even due to use um, that your optic stays exactly how you want it to be uh this is an amazing feature and it should be an industry standard in my opinion an industry standard um the 509 also has the ability to change the reticle altogether if you're not a fan of the outer circle you can turn it off uh, turning the outer circle off will save you battery life. And once again, on the packaging, you can see here, you can just keep just the Chevron on instead of the Chevron and the outer circle if battery life is a concern to you or if you just don't like the outer circle, which personally, I love it. And I don't know if I've actually mentioned this, but the whole point of the outer circle is that if you go to aim and you're off slightly, you'll see what part of the circle is in your window and your brain will like already know how to adjust the gun in order to get that chevron in the center so that is kind of the whole point of the outer circle so there's that that's something i probably should have mentioned right off the bat i do apologize um so yeah we already talked about all that stuff um so after going to the range and shooting about 160 ish rounds uh through my carry gun with the 509 acss so the he 509 with that acs vulcan reticle and there's now when you are holding this arm's length away, you don't see that outer circle. You only see the chevron. Um, and it's not very crisp on camera, but I assure you to the naked eye, it is very crisp. I even have a slight astigmatism or stigmatism, whatever you want to call it, where like lights kind of burst out for me. And I actually don't have too much of an issue with this optic. So that is cool. But your mileage may vary. So we've shot 160 rounds with this optic today and I've already fallen in love with it. Um, personally, the Chevron, which is the partial triangle thing in the center, like that's your aiming point. Um, in my opinion, it just seems much better than a regular dot. Um, you get the advantages of a one MOA dot in that the tip of the Chevron <clears throat> acts as a really good point to zero to. Um, you can also use the tip of the chevron for very fine shots when you're really trying to get a very accurate shot a very precise shot the tip of that chevron is very exact and it's awesome i mean it's excellent um, but you also get the advantages of like a 6 moa dot uh, by taking quick shots just by placing the chevron center mass so basically what i'm getting at is if you just put that triangle center mass on a target and squeeze your shot will hit the target, especially if it's like a torso size target 
within defensive use range, um, that Chevron, if you just utilize the entire Chevron, you're going to be able to make very accurate shots. Um, or at least shots that get you hits, which is all that really matters, right? Um, the outer circle ensures that when you draw, if you happen to be slightly off, um, you can just adjust very rapidly. Um, I'm sure there are guys who will say things along the lines of just train more and do not, oh, just train more and you do not need the outer circle. And to that, I say standing seven yards away from a piece of paper is much different than finding the dot in an awkward position. Shooting under a car, when, ugh, shooting under a car, your vision may be impaired, one handed, crouched, kneeled, laying down, all make it more difficult to find your dot. But honestly, it just depends on your personal preference. Even if you do not want the outer circle, I believe that that Chevron, that the ACS, or the, is it? Yeah, ACSS Vulcan Reticle. I believe that Chevron is just better than a dot, guys. So even if you don't want that outer circle, I highly recommend buying this for the Chevron. And they also do have the 507 with the ACSS Vulcan Reticle, I think. You guys can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. I know they do have an opening mitter option with this reticle. So if you don't want to fork over this much cash, then I don't blame you. And you can get one cheaper with the Chevron. But um, yeah, so that's pretty much the video. Um, I know it's kind of a quick one or whatever because it's not really a review. It's just kind of an unboxing or whatever. But uh, I'm a big fan of the reticle. I'm a big fan of the optic. It was very fun to shoot today. Honestly, I was a little worried it would be a little too bulky for me, but it's not that much more bulky than a like 507C. Like the actual width and height is very similar. It's just the depth is a little is a little you know it's a little bit longer or whatever. But I love it. It's excellent. I love the Chevron, and uh, yeah, that's my current carry optic, and I'm in love with it. So. Yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think of this. If you think it's overrated, let me know. If you think it's amazing, let me know. Um, if you have one, let me know. If you don't have one, let me know. Um, but yeah, over coming from the 507C to this, I like this way, way more. Um, it's excellent. I actually got this on sale for like $380, which is a pretty good deal. Uh, because for $380, you're getting close to that 508T range. And you're getting a closed emitter optic. So, yep. That's pretty much all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching the video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Woo!